Hi, I'm Rob Cos and welcome to my shop. Frequent problem in small shops, limited tools. How do we turn rough lumber into dimension lumber with just a thickness planer? Stay with me. I'm going to give you a couple options. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you'll receive alerts when we release a new video. And anytime we use a special tool, we'll always leave a description down below. All right, let's get to work. So in previous videos, I've actually shown you how to take a piece of rough lumber like this. This is as it comes from the mill. It's been dried, but it is rough, it's twisted. And I've shown you how to make it flat, smooth, and square on all six surfaces just using hand planes. We'll leave a link in the description below. But how do you maximize your thickness planer? And for most folks, their thickness planers are wider than their jointers. Or what if you don't have a jointer and all you have is a thickness planer? You've got to get that bottom side flat before you can effectively use your planer to get the opposite side parallel to it. That is the challenge. This is an, uh, a very old general thickness planer. It has a 14 inch capacity, which means you can plane a board up to 14 inches wide. You can, you've got six inches in capacity, although most of your work is gonna be done two inches or less. Uh, and they all work the same. This is the, uh, this is the main table. It, it, it raises and lowers. Now there are some other models where the actual cutter raises and lowers in relation to the table, but for the sake of how it works, it's not gonna be any different. This has what are called bed rolls. And these bed rolls just make it a little easier for the board to slide along the bottom. So if you look up underneath here, the first thing you have is an infeed roll. Sometimes it's segmented, but it, sometimes it's actually a, a rubber roll, but whatever, its purpose is to grab the board and control it, regulate the speed as it's forced through the machine. The next thing you're gonna do is there's a, there's a, a chip breaker, we'll call it, or a pressure bar and that puts pressure on the board just ahead of the cutting head so that it doesn't vibrate or chatter. Then you've got your cutter head and your cutter head is always going to be spinning opposite the direction of the infeed roll or pushing the, the, uh, the board in. And then right behind that, there's another chip breaker, pressure bar, whatever you wanna call it. And at the final stage, there's a smooth outfeed roll and that just helps to get the board out of the, uh, out of the machine. Obviously, the last roller is going to be sitting lower than the first one because it's got to compensate for the material that's been removed by the cutter head. Now, what does this do? Well, this table and the cutter head are parallel to one another. So whatever you put in the board, whatever you put in the machine, this machine is going to make that board, the top, parallel to the bottom. There's a fair bit of pressure on these, this pressure roll. So if you take a board that is cupped and you put it through the machine, the pressure roll or the infeed will lay it flat. The, the pressure bar under, just ahead of the cutter will keep it in position. The cutter head will remove the same amount of material across the width, meaning it'll make it parallel to the bottom. However, it's been cupped when it went in and now it's pressed flat but when it gets out the other side, the cup is gonna return and it's going to be parallel, but it's not going to be flat. Meaning if you put in a cup board that was seven eighths of an inch in thickness and set it for three quarters of an inch, at the other end, you'd get a three quarter inch board that is uniform thickness throughout. However, it's cupped, so you're no farther ahead. You have to have something flat on the bottom as it passes through in order for this machine to make it nice and flat and parallel top to bottom when it comes out the other side. So the typical process is you flatten the bottom first over here in the jointer, then you send it through the thickness planer and it makes the top parallel to the bottom and now you've got a nice board that you can easily work with. So what I don't know why it's happened this way, but almost all planers are going to be wider than the typical jointer. Jointers come four inch, six inch, eight inch, there may even be some 10 inch ones, but the common ones are four, six, and eight. And yet, I don't even know of a thickness planer that's only eight inches wide. They start at 10 and go up. So you almost always have greater capacity on your planer than you do on your jointer. 
you got to solve that problem. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so here's what we've got. This is a piece of aspen. It's a hardwood, relatively soft, easy to work. I like it because it's nice and white. Makes really good uh, drawer sides. It's just under 36 inches in length, and it's approximately five and three quarters and three quarter inch in width, and it's a little better than a one inch. So it's considered four quarter. So that is designed to give us or allow us to get a stable three quarter inch board. However, it's rocking corner to corner. So if we send that through the thickness planer, we'd come up with a smooth rocky board. Got to fix it. Here are the weapons we're going to use. We have an option. This is traditionally what would have been used. This is a scrub plane. Scrub plane has a big rear handle that you can get full four finger grip on, whereas a traditional bench plane is designed for three grip, three finger grip. Relatively light, you're gonna throw it around unlike the way you would throw around a normal plane or push around a normal plane. It's got a big thick blade. It has, what's probably most unique about it is the blade is not straight, it's actually curved has a big open throat, and that allows for heavy shavings to get through without being offering any resistance. And uh, we, we've covered sharpening the blade in another video. We'll, we can leave a link to that. There aren't very so my first challenge is to determine where are the high points. I don't have to come out with a perfectly finished board. All I have to come out with is something that will sit flat. That way, when we thick, send it through the thickness planer, We'll make the top parallel to the bottom, even though the bottom may not be perfectly smooth. But once we have the top cleaned, we can turn it over and send it through and clean off the bottom. So we're trying to do this in as fast a way as possible. So using my bench top as a reference, and you want to make sure you don't have any chunks of glue or anything else on there, and you want your bench top to be flat. So it's pretty obvious there's a serious issue here. <clears throat> So as I wiggle it back and forth like that, I'm looking for the high points. In other words, what is touching on the bench? And the first one that's really easy to spot as I wiggle it is right here. There's a pivot point right underneath there. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to deal with that first. This is a whole lot of uh, trial and error, checking and, and planing and checking and planing. So I also am looking to see how severe the problem is, and it's quite severe, which means instead of taking little wee tiny shavings, I'm going to take fairly substantial ones so we can get this done as quickly as possible. So I know this is the problem. I'm going to turn it over, just try to get some idea as to the grain direction. I really can't tell very well just yet. I figured this is the problem area, so I'll go in with my scrub plane. And remember, it was quite bad, so... I'll take a fair bit off of that corner. I lucked out on the green direction. Okay, make sure none of those shavings are in the way. Okay. Now you can also get to the point where you can look and spot a real high spot. I think all I'm doing is just moving this farther back. So take a little more off of here. Let's check it. Remember, you don't want any debris. Okay. We're still pivoting back here. I'm gonna do a little more work here before I switch and go up there, just so that I'm not taking all the material off of one end. Okay, let's switch and go back here. So doing the same thing, wiggling it corner to corner. No sense doing it this way because there's no movement. But if I switch and go opposite corners, this one, this one, I can see my pivot point is right underneath here. Now, probably need to flip this the other way, but I'm going to try it and see, meaning grain direction. No, that's all right.
And at some point, you're going to want to retract that blade a little bit. Always want the uh, solution to be commensurate with the problem. So a little tiny problem, you don't want a huge solution, meaning having a blade sticking way out. So pull it in and try to match that up. Okay. Gets a little bit harder. Actually, it gets quite a bit harder as you get to a point where you have less and less of a problem. So I'm, I'm wiggling this while I'm looking right along here. And what I want to do is spot the area where it's not moving. Here's what I mean. If I look down here, there's a lot of movement. If I look here, there's a little less. As I come along, there's a point right in here where there's hardly any movement at all. And back there, there's hardly any movement. So I would suggest somewhere right underneath here, Now, I'm gonna bring my, bring my blade in, and on a, on a tool like this where there is no adjustment, you, I, I hold the plane like so, thumb and, and finger over here, and as I loosen this lever cap, I just pull the blade up a little bit. Sight down the sole to see how much exposure I have, and when I got what I want, tighten it up. Now, I'm gonna show you how a dirty bench really helps. As we get closer and closer to finding those last little points, I'm looking to see where my pivot point is, and it's somewhere underneath here. So I'm gonna put some pressure right there and just rub like that. Now, we'll turn, flip it over, and we see a dirty spot right there. See that? So if we look at this area right in here, that's the part that was touching on the bench. So now what I'm gonna do is come in, and I'm gonna just remove that. Don't go too far. And yes, this would be a little more difficult if it was a really big board. Okay, it's moved up here a little bit. There it is, right there. See that? Now, there's going to be other spots too, but that's why it's important. In fact, if you were to do it over the entire length of the piece, you'd find several of those. So it's critical that when you do that little test that you go to a specific area and only pay attention to that specific area when you flip the board over. Otherwise, you'll be chasing spots all over and you'll never get anywhere. Okay, now we're over here, right underneath. Right along that outside edge. Is that it there in the center? Okay, now we got it to sit flat. So let's go over and process this to finish out and get a three quarter inch board. Still a fat inch in a lot of places, so I'm gonna set the planer for an inch.
Okay, option number two, similar board. Not quite as bad, but still it would require a fair bit of work on the bottom. I'm gonna take a piece of MDF, same length, a little bit wider, set it on there. We're gonna use this as a sled, but what we wanna do is we're gonna use a series of wedges to get this to stop moving. So I'm gonna take a piece of pine and a saw and just cut some wedges. You can do this on a bandsaw. Okay, I've got my wedges, I've got a glue gun. And just kind of see what we need to do. do it. Okay. Just a little bit on both so it doesn't slide off. Also got to be able to get it apart after. Oops. Give that a sec. I'm looking for any real serious gaps. There's another one. This one up here is All right, give that a few minutes for the glue to dry, and we'll take that over to the thickness planer. Remember, we've now, I went in and I put a couple of extra little beads of glue just in spots just to help hold that. I don't want that sliding off the sled. So if we measure that, it's about an inch and 11 sixteenths. Check the other end, about the same. So I'm gonna set my first pass for an inch and five eighths. <laughs> Okay, that top surface is clean. Now we just got to pry this off. Go back and finish this. Okay, conclusion. Both, we got two flat boards. If you're not afraid of a little exercise and you're not in a hurry and you want to enjoy the process, scrub plane or planer and some time. If you want it to be done quickly and you don't really care about the pro well, I shouldn't say you don't care about the process, but you just want to get it done. It is, you're, you are going to have the extra materials involved. Of course, a glue gun, a little bit of hot milk glue is not going to be a big issue, nor are the wedges. 
but both will give you a nice flat board utilizing just your planer. And it's a real option if you end up dealing with wide boards and you don't have the capacity with a wide jointer to match your planer. Good luck. Uh, if you like my work, if you like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. And I've always said better tools make it a whole lot easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools, and also talk to you about our online and in-person workshops. Good luck in your woodwork.